I've already covered the 35th and 36th Sentai, so how about the 37th? Nah, I'll wait until the 10th anniversary. Wait, it's already 2023? My last upload was when? Okay, so um, it's been a while. I can't promise I'll be able to be more active this year, but I'm hoping to. Thank you so much for a thousand subs. This program is brought to you by the subscribe button. Another year means it's time for another 10 year retrospective. This time we're looking back on the 37th Sentai, Zyuden Sentai Kyo Ryuje, which started in February of 2013, immediately following the previous Sentai Go Busters. It joined the superhero time block alongside Kamen Rider Wizard. Kyo Ryuje is the third dinosaur themed Sentai after Zyu Ranger and Aba Ranger. The Zyu Rangers were ancient warriors reborn in the modern day. The Ava Rangers combined their dino theme with explosive energy, and the Kyo Ryujers took their dino theme in yet another direction with the spice of samba dancing and battery themed toy gimmicks. The villains in Kyo Ryujir are the Debos Army, an ancient race of aliens that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. In their initial invasion millions of years ago, the wise sage Torin fought against them with the help of dinosaurs that he turned into the Zyuden Ryu, giving them mechanical bodies and storing their spiritual power into batteries called Zyudenshi. The battle drove the dinosaurs to extinction, but the Zyuden Ryu lived on to battle Deboss throughout the ages with the help of a handful of brave warriors. Now, in the modern day, a new team of Kyoidujers, also often referred to just as Yusha or Braves, are gathered from across the globe to fight against Davos in their newest conquest against Earth. The Kyoidujers are a group with a lot of personality. Red is Daigo Kiryu, also known as King, a wild, high energy guy who grew up traveling the world and following in his father's footsteps along the path of dragons. He often makes decisions from his gut rather than his brain, but his gut is usually right, making him a strong leader. Pink is Ami Yuzuki, one of the younger members and the sole girl in the core team. She's a rebellious teen that was born to a rich family in America. She was expected to be a demure rich lady and behave as such, but she's actually both physically and mentally strong. She's also very perceptive of others' feelings. Black is Ian Yorkland a laid-back womanizer who was studying in Europe when he was recruited. He's one of the more cool-headed fighters of the group, fighting with style and intellect. Despite how he comes off, he actually has a troubled past, which I'll go over in a bit. He initially comes off as prickly and unfriendly, but once he warms up to the team, he's loyal and dependable. Blue is Nobuhara Udo, nicknamed Nosan, a nickname that he does not appreciate at first, as it makes him sound like an Ossan or an old man. He's the oldest of the team and has a penchant for puns and old man jokes. He's a bit clumsy and goofy, but he's a hard worker and is also physically very strong. He's honest to a fault and cares a lot about his widowed sister Yuko and his niece Rika. He tackles tough situations with humor and keeps morale high. His focus episodes often deal with down-to-earth adult problems that you don't see often in Sentai, and they're some of my favorites. Green is Soji Ripukan, a high school prodigy and the youngest of the group. Despite his age, he's the most serious member. He's a trained swordsman that mostly keeps to himself, but finds his place in the team and warms up to everyone as the series goes on. As mentioned before, the Kyoidujer's mentor and commander, Torin, battled the Deboss over many centuries, assisting many other braves throughout history. Some of these braves fight on in the modern day as spirit rangers. In fact, there is a brave that appears before the Kyoryuja's proper sixth member does. Kyoryu Sian, Ramirez, a brave from 500 years ago, gets the new team's help saving his partner Ankidon, one of the ten great Zyu Denryu that form alternate combinations with Kyoryuzin, the main mech. He doesn't become a mainstay on the team, but does help on occasion, as does the other spirit ranger, Kyoryu Grey. Kyoryu Grey's name is Tessai. He was a Chinese martial artist from 1500 years ago, and he was the very first brave. In his first appearance, Tessai gives the Kyoryujers a trial using his illusion abilities, which gives them new strength by overcoming their fears. On the villain side, the Deboss are led by Kaos, a tactician acting on behalf of their true leader Deboss, who the Deboss army is attempting to revive, as mentioned before. Under Kaos's command are the Deibos Knights, who are all based around emotions. There's the Joyful Knight, Candelira, the Sorrowful Knight, Igaron, and the Raging Knight, Dogold. 
They each embody their emotions thoroughly. Candelira is always telling everyone to keep smiling and stay positive. Aingaran is pessimistic, and his catchphrase, Shimirua, roughly means, what a tearjerker. Despite being such opposites, Aigaran and Candelira get along well, with Candelira always trying to cheer Aigaran up, and him being not so secretly smitten with her. Dogold is always angry about something, and takes it out in battle. In addition to the generals, there's also Lakuro, a short and childish imp who holds onto the regenerating water, which they use to make the defeated Debo monsters grow for the mecha fights. All of the major villains have or gain some deep connection with the heroes, and their development is one of my favorite aspects of Kyoryuji. Kaos and Torin have a long history that is divulged upon throughout the series. Ian's aforementioned tragic backstory involves his best friend having been killed by Aigaron in the initial invasion of the Deibos in the modern day. When he learns this, Ian initially goes into a rage when fighting Aigaron, and his grudge remains for much of the series. Candelira and her lackey Lakuro start to sympathize with the humans as the show goes on. Because Candelira's emotion is happiness, her plans are always the least threatening, and she's actually very fit to coexist with humanity. She finds no son's jokes funny, and the show even hints at some future romance for the two. Akuro, on the other hand, becomes a fan of a romance manga that is actually written by one of Tessai's descendants. And hidden within Dogold is the true sixth member of the Kyoryujers, Kyoryu Gold. Very literally. Dogold is actually a suit of armor that has possessed the body of Utsusemi Maru, a brave and samurai from the Sengoku era. Horin was led to believe that he had been killed in action fighting against Dogold, but Dogold was actually preserving and using his body to fight. After the Kyoryujers defeat Dogold and save Utsusemi Maru from his prison, he initially comes off as cold and distant. This would have made him pretty similar to Gal Ranger's Gal Silver who is also an ancient hero turned villain that was saved and returned as a ranger. However, the truth is that Utsusemi Maru is a big softy, and was forcing himself to act reserved and cool because of something he had been told by his former lord before he was sealed within Dogold. After revealing this, he settles in as the sixth member of the Kyoryujers, being a mainstay for the entirety of the rest of the series. His fellow Kyoryujers give him the nickname Uchi, Dogold was not destroyed for good though, and he continuously uses the bodies of Debo monsters to continue fighting. He would continue to be Gold's rival. Around the halfway point, Debos is revived in his monstrous form. However, this revival was incomplete, and the Kyoryujers defeat him with the power of a new mech, Plezuan. Plezuan's partner was Kyoryu Violet, Dr. Ilshade. He was the professor that developed much of the current technology for the Kyoryujers' arsenal, and also provides the vocals for it. However, as he's gotten old, he's given up his role as a fighter. He passes the torch to his granddaughter Yayoi, who continues to support the Kyoryujers on the tech side, as well as fighting as the new Kyoryu Violet. Around this point, a new knight, Endorf, Knight of Hatred, was introduced. Endorf is as what you might expect, a hateful creature. He's a clever schemer that complains often of headaches. Endorf and his new monsters are tough. The team struggles against them until Daigo obtains his powered up carnival form. The introduction of carnival doesn't mean that things are all fun and games though, as it is also revealed that Torin was originally a member of the Deibos army, and Candelira puts him under a spell that forces him to fight against his team. But the Kyoryujers manage to save Torin and defeat Endorf. Dogold, tired of using weak bodies, takes this opportunity to possess Endorf. However, even from within Dogold he was scheming. Endorf allowed his hatred to grow from inside Dogold until he was able to take control, free himself, and force Dogold to be his underling. While Endorf was still inside Dogold, Horin's arc continued. They introduced the darkness of the earth, Debos' hell, where Debo monsters go when they are defeated. The monsters were beginning to revive from that hell, and in an effort to expand Debos' hell's influence further, Kaos created Mad Torin a clone of Torin who represents what he would have been if he hadn't turned against the Deibos army. The Kyoryujers, having found the final Zyudenryu Bragigas, determined that they need to find him a partner to become the 10th Kyoryujer and defeat Mad Torin. Torin, after overcoming his conflicted feelings over Mad Torin's existence, realizes that Bragigas has already accepted his bravery and chosen him as Kyoryu Silver, allowing him to transform and defeat Mad Torin. 
Horin's arc is another one of my favorite parts from Kyoryuji. Seeing behind the curtain of the Kyoryuji's seemingly infallible sage and giving him something to confront and overcome really solidifies him among the best of the mentor figures in Sentai. In the finale arc, after the original generals have gathered a large amount of human emotions, two new generals were introduced, Kil Borero and Ice Rondo. They gathered the power necessary to bring back Devos's mind, and Devos revives into a new humanoid form. To make matters worse, Daigo's father, Dan Tetsu, has seemingly aligned himself with the Devos. He kills Torin and takes the Kyoryu silver powers, leading to a confrontation between father and son. At this point, Kaos reveals that he created the two new generals to replace Aigaron and Candelira, who he has deemed failures after their consistent buffoonery. He tries to have Candelira eliminated, as she might join the humans just as Torin did, but Aigaron overhears his plan and is put onto the chopping block as well. Ironically, this really sets Candelira and Lakuro onto the path of joining the Kyoryujers. Aigaron makes a tearful plea to Ian and the other Kyoryujers to save the two Devas dropouts, and the revelations about his death were genuinely heartbreaking. This moment is the end of Ian's vendetta, and he chooses to end it with an act of goodwill, and even uses Aigaron's axe to defeat Ice Ronda. Between the loss of Aigaron and the beginning of the revival of the Devo monsters from Hell, all hope seems lost. But it is revealed that Torin's death was a ploy to send him with his righteous heart intact to take the offensive into the heart of Deibos Hell. The other spirit rangers follow to assist Torin, but not before passing their ranger powers to Tessai's descendant who I mentioned earlier, Shinya, and Nosan's sister Yuko, to reform the team of 10 Kyoryujers for the final battle. The team splits up, each taking on their own battles, with the main team getting hit with a wave of dark energy that prevents them from transforming. The team splits further while fighting without their ranger powers to send Daigo and Ami into the frozen castle to battle Debos. Dolgold turns on Endorf, becoming armor for Utsusemi Maru, choosing not to possess him, but rather combine their power. With Endorf gone, the rivals cross blades one final time and both fall in the end. Ami and Daigo are initially unable to put up a fight against Debos, and after a heart to heart, Daigo throws Ami out of the base to fight Debos by himself. Debos has the upper hand and reveals that he is the creation of an even higher being to demonstrate how small and pathetic humans are. But the other Kyoryujis' wishes channeled through the Earth's true melody give the spirits the power to defeat Kaos in Debos' hell with the help of Candelira, save Uchi from following in the footsteps of the previous Dinosaur Sentai 6 strangers, and give Daigo the power to transform one last time to defeat Debos. Daigo is believed to have been lost in the destruction of the castle, but was saved by the Zyudenryu, and the TV series ends on the reunion of the Kyoryujers. There's still a lot of stuff I have to summarize though, as Kyoryuji has some of the most supplementary material in Sentai. There are two DVD specials, one just goes over the Kyoryuji's arsenal to advertise the toys, and the other is the Armed On Midsummer Festival, which features some comedic scenarios with only a few of the cast members participating. It mainly exists to introduce some more toys and promote the upcoming summer movie, Business As Usual. The summer movie in question was the Caporincho of Music, which introduced a movie-exclusive evil ranger, Death Ranger, voiced by Mamoru Miyano, and as the title suggests, is the first and only Sentai musical. In the winter crossover movie, they met the previous Sentai, the Go Busters, as is the tradition. This movie, however, also features the return of the previous two dinosaur Sentai teams, Zoo Ranger and Abba Ranger. The Kyoryujers also played a significant role in the superhero Tyson Z movie, which crossed Super Sentai over with Kamen Rider and Metal Heroes. Then, in the crossover movie with the Sentai that followed, Tokyujer, they actually follow up on Debos' threat from the finale of the Kyoryujer TV series. The Kyoryujers have to team up with the Tokyujers to fight the creator Devious, which I think is a really cool concept to use in a crossover movie like this. This one's my personal favorite Kyoryujer continuation. It's charming to see the two Sentai teams interact, and there's even a bit of Kyoryuji post-series fan service for everyone, including the Extra Rangers and Candelira and Lakuro. But I'm still not done summarizing, so strap in. 
There is still the 100 Years Later movie, set of course 100 years later, with the descendants of the original Kyoidujers and Candelira as the new mentor figure, all played by the same actors. The new Kyoidujers have different personalities to their predecessors, and the team even starts out with all cool colors before they discover their true colors. This one was kind of a spoof on the 10 years after Hurricaneger movie that Toei had produced the year before. Toei has produced a few more of these since, including their most recently announced Hurricaneger and Avaranger 20 years after movies, both of which are scheduled for 2023 and are a series I'd be excited to cover on this channel sometime this year. There hasn't been any announcement for a 10 year Kyoryuger movie, but I don't really think we need one, especially considering everything we already got for Kyoryuger, including a special released 4 years after the TV series. This is Brave. Battle Frontier was released in collaboration with the mobile game Brave Frontier 2. It is numbered as an episode 33.5 and features an otaku devil's monster who loves the Kyoryujers. It's definitely not the same as a 10 year return movie, but it was still a reunion for the cast as the Kyoryujers and a fun celebration of the series years later. Also part of this Brave Frontier collab was Yukon Sentai Brave Frontier. A commercial where the Kyoryuja cast played a parody sentai based on characters from the game. Speaking of games, there was also a 3DS Japan exclusive Kyoryuja game called Game on Gaborincho. It appears to be a pretty standard beat em up. Also of note is a film from the Toei Hero Next series, We're the Bounty Hunter Troop. In a similar way to the 100 years after movie, the Kyoryuja cast played new characters with wildly different personalities to their roles in Kyoryuja. The whole Toei Hero Next series consisted of non-hero based films featuring actors that played characters from their tokusatsu hero catalog. There is even a stage play in 2017. The Bounty Hunter Troop is definitely not a Kyoryuja sequel, but it is a wild tangent that Toei produced. I do have to mention Kyoryuja's American Power Rangers counterpart, Dino Charge, which ran from 2015 to 2016. It adapts some elements from Kyoryuja, but is mostly original. It drops the Samba theme and adds more to the space themes of the villain. Normally, I wouldn't have anything else to mention here for foreign adaptations. However, Kyoryuja was so popular in South Korea, where it was dubbed as Power Rangers Dino Force, that the South Korean licensor Daewon Media produced their own sequel in association with Toei, Dino Force Brave in 2017. It's only 12 episodes long and features yet another new cast of characters, this time played by South Korean actors with retooled suits and mecha. The Dino Force Brave cast has a few fairly similar traits to the original team, but none of the new Braves are quite the same as the original Kyoryujers. The main five outside of red each also have a different dinosaur partner to their respective color from Kyoryuger, which is a little confusing when they're still using the same helmets as Kyoryuger just with a bit of new paint. Probably due to the short nature of the series, the team outside of red also gets sidelined very quickly. They don't get much outside of their character archetypes. Blue is vain, black is strong, green is naive, and pink is spoiled. If you thought the original Kyoryuja was too red focused, then you're not gonna have a good time with this one. The villains also don't do a whole lot. They have some pretty cool suit designs in line with the day boss from the original, but they mostly only exist to have somebody to fight. Red and gold are the focus of Brave. Red, Dooyoung, was another child of the dragons like Daigo, but it doesn't have the same kind of energy that Daigo did. He's peppy and positive, but he doesn't have the same wildness. Brave Gold is the crux of the plot. He fights against the Braves at first as a hired mercenary for the Neo Devos, but he is actually the long lost brother of Brave Red, and the main plot of the series is that conflict. Due to the short nature of Brave, I don't really think we got to know the cast, and uh, eh, it was alright. Definitely not the sequel I would recommend as a Kyoryuja fan. Dino Force Brave was also dubbed back into Japanese as Kyoryuja Brave and is technically canon. Canon is a, an absolute mess in Sentai though, so it's not really that strange, especially considering stuff like the aforementioned superhero Tyson. Anything can happen, really. On first glance, Kyoryuja seems like a very silly Super Sentai series entry with the dancing theme and goofy comedy, and that's not entirely wrong. Kyoryuja definitely leans pretty heavily into its comedy, as many of the sentai that followed it would as well. 
However, Kyoryuji also doesn't shy away from some pretty heavy material, like the aforementioned Ian backstory or the episode where no son has to deal with a Debo monster that makes people see illusions of their dead loved ones, including his sister's husband and Rika's father. I think that ability to move between comedic and serious tones from episode to episode is something that has and continues to define Sentai as a series. The No San episode I mentioned, I think, is a perfect representation of what I see as the emotional core of Kyo Ryuji, which is finding positivity, in this case humor, even in the darkest times. The Kyo Ryuji's fight many losing battles over the series run. All of which they overcome with their undying will to remain brave to the very end. It's not exactly unique for a Sentai series, overcoming adversity is a staple of hero series in general, but I think Kyoryuji's take on it is great. As a series with musical theming, it's also of course fitting that the series has some excellent music. You've been listening to a bunch of the instrumentals from these over the course of this video. I already love general Toku songs, but that additional samba flavor really does it for me. A common criticism I've seen towards Kyoryuji, which I hinted at earlier, and many other Super Sentai too, is that it is too red focused. While I understand the desire to see the whole team get new forms and power ups, I really don't see Kyoryuji as a red focused series story wise, at least not any more than any other Sentai. Red is almost always the main character, with the rest of the team getting a few focused episodes each, and that formula I believe is intact with Kyoryuji. I think the core team of six that it establishes is overall very strong. The Spirit Rangers and the two Violets don't get quite as much development, but they're cool additions nonetheless, and I really appreciate what they add in terms of expanding on the history of the Braves, which in turn really adds to Tornin's character, which I already said is one of my favorites. I spent most of the runtime of this video summarizing the series, a lot more than my previous Sentai videos, and that's not just because of all the extra stuff. So much happens in Kyoryuji, and it really didn't feel right for me to leave it out. With its excellent villains, strong overarching story, and compelling cast, I believe that Kyoryuji stands bravely as another worthy entry into Sentai's long legacy. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I would really appreciate if you would subscribe and like and all that good stuff if you enjoyed this, and maybe even support me through other means. I have a Patreon that I'm hoping to get off the ground, and I stream on Twitch. No matter what you choose to do, thanks again, and I hope to see you in the next video.